Hello and welcome to Canadian Video Gaming. I'm the Plate Canadian and today I have a game for you of StarCraft 2 between Vortex, our Yellow Zerg, and ESC Daisy, our Red Protoss. This is from obviously Wings of Liberty. I will have for you soon some uh, beta play of the uh, Heart of Swarm. Uh, so yeah, just to get a little bit of background and underway to this, I will be uh, putting up more and more StarCraft videos as I have more and more opportunity and time and now that I've started this channel. And uh, so yeah, look here to see more of them. I also plan on holding a StarCraft 2 tournament sometime soon. I'm just waiting for the uh, return of the license and permission from Blizzard. I put it in about uh, almost two weeks ago, two weeks tomorrow, and uh, we'll just continue to wait for that license so that we can hopefully get our tournament underway. It will be a uh, out of 30 people First come, first serve basis. Anybody who wants to join can. You just have to email me at uh, on my YouTube channel so that I know you are interested, and I need your in-game uh, character, like your in-game StarCraft name, so that I can uh, invite you to the tournament. The prize pool is a hundred dollars, with fifty dollars for first prize, thirty dollars for second prize, and twenty dollars for third prize. All right. Also on my channel, you'll be able to find lots of other uh, videos. Now. Nothing too extraneous going on right now. We see the pylon down here, so most likely we're going to see a forge fast expand. Uh, the Zerg playing it safe. Let's get this production queue underway. There we go. We do see the spawning pool first before the hatchery. This will just prevent the uh, probe from unduly denying that uh, expansion. Pesky probe doing the mining trick so that it kind of delays this for a couple of seconds. Not too much, but every little bit counts at the pro level play. Alrighty. Uh, Chrono boosting probes. Oh, we are going to see the uh, Nexus drop down first, right about now, once he gets enough minerals. And there it goes. So he does drop that before Forge. You can see that the Zerg isn't doing a whole lot. And he is actually denying the Zerg from getting this expansion down. Until, of course, the second uh, drone is able to finally push the probe out. And the hatchery does go down. And our spawning pool is just finishing right now. We have the Forge finishing as well. Uh, really nice... Uh, right now movement out with the uh, overlord pretty standard play for a pro player uh it'll be nice to see once he gets some creep going how well he does with that so far pretty standard play we see a queen on the way we see four zerglings really really good we see a gateway to help finish off this wall in another uh, pylon to help do the same most likely he'll drop a a cannon or another building here to help finish off this wall in especially since he has the forge yeah and since he was waiting most likely he was waiting for the cannon and there it goes so the cannon will uh, increase the amount of defense he can offer for this front entrance. It will provide a huge amount of uh, pushback for the Zerglings because they'll have to run all the way around this cannon to try and get into his base. Really good uh, SimCity placement thus far. He is now, just now, going for his gas because he wanted his lots of minerals right off the bat to uh, help provide the necessary materials for that front entrance construction. Oh, this is on Daybreak, of course. We do see the second gas going down. Really nice placement of the map. Uh, uh, one versus one. Uh, map so we have a good spread of bases on the left and the right and then a multitude of expansions in the middle for both players to try and go for we do see a third expansion going down for the zerg we see the cyber next core going down for the protoss always good always good we see a second queen underway um surprised still not to see any ex uh creep spread uh, i understand that he's using it for the larva which is completely understandable, but it would be good to start that creep spread off as soon as possible to try and connect up first off these three bases and then slowly make his way towards the Protoss base. Both players though just really working on uh, work, uh, their workers and their uh, macro. The uh, Zerg clearly droning up, uh, bleh, <laughs> droning up significantly. We see the warp gate now just uh, starting. We see our first zealot about halfway or almost about halfway done. We see still more drones out of our uh, Zerg player. We saw those four Zerglings earlier. I don't know where they are. Yeah, this one's positioning to do the creep spread. So finally getting that creep spread underway. Really good positioning and uh, map coverage. Oh, that's where the Zerglings are covering the towers. Really good map coverage for vision with his Zerglings and Overlords. Giving him a huge view of the map. Really good uh, movement of this Overlord back here. Oh, we actually see a Stargate underway. Most likely we see some Phoenixes. Uh, Phoenix. Phoenixes. Jeez. Uh, see some Phoenix as well as possibly a... Uh, I'm blanking on the word now. Uh, but some other uh, air units. Most likely though we'll just stick to the Phoenix as he is still building a ground army to back this up. We'll have to see if he actually does drop a... Oh, yep, does drop a robotics facility. So he might be using the Phoenix just to scatter on the map, pick off some overlords, or to try and uh, trick his uh, enemy into overcompensating for the air. 
and already Evolution Chamber and Roachborn. So he, uh, if anything, the Zerg most likely has either anticipated, oh yes, he has seen the uh, air unit, so he will have ample protection underway. And hopefully he'll get out enough roaches to do, uh, to punish this. Though with the uh, robotics facility coming out, there's going to be uh, very soon Immortals, which will help to push back and uh, demolish those roaches as they do a huge amount of damage. We do see creep spread in two locations. It'll be good if he actually keeps on top of it. I know it, uh, Zerg can be micro-intensive and a lot going on, but always good to focus a little bit on that creep spread. We do see Grounds Weapons Level 1 for the Protoss, as well as Metabolic Boost for the Zerg. Uh, we do see, yes, the Spore Crawlers are going down. Here's one here. Most likely he's going to drop, yeah, he's going to drop one in every single base, which will just provide him enough protection to push back any real threat of those Phoenix from hurting his units. We do see uh, Zerg Missile Attack, so yeah, he is anticipating on building quite a few Roaches. And of which will benefit from the ranged attack. Yes, we do see, though, our first immortal. First one? Yes, first. Which means the roaches are going to be next to worthless if there's a significant number of immortals on the field. Sadly, the Zerg most, uh, does not see this, so we'll have to see how he's going to try and counter that when he, doesn't, uh, when he does see it. This overlord's still here, though this, oh wow, up to four phoenix now. This cloud of phoenix could easily pick him off if they chose to. Those teams are going to go off and scout the map, most likely put on a little bit of harassment towards those workers. We do see a lot of gateways going down as well. Uh, we do see the Tickle Cannons trying to kill the uh, Overlord, finally does. And we do see a second Immortal on the Ray, along with the three gateways. So he's going to go for a huge ground push after the Zerg tries to compensate for this air. We do see a lot of Zerglings though going across the map, and we see the Infestors, Infestor, Infestation Pit. Infestors Pit. Infestation Pit. We do see a Queen being picked off right now. Really good use right now of these guys. We can see already no protection for these drones because of the limited range by the Spore Crawler. So he's able to work in a little bit here, a little bit there, the cost of these Phoenix. We do see all the gas going down now for the Zerg. These have already been established. Same with this one, but this one's finally now being established as he wants all the gas he can possibly get. Getting a couple more workers and then most likely will leave. As he very well does. I think this is now our third Immortal. Oh, even keeping them back here to keep them out of view of the front gate with the Zerglings hanging around. Really, really, really good. The Zerg is not going to be able to anticipate this right away. He can guess, whereas a lot of play more pro players do guess at the potential that their enemy has, but it's really hard to try and guess every single thing they're doing. As we do see, he's trying to go for the Infestors uh, and their uh, bonus energy. And the Infestors, yeah, they'll help a little bit with these uh, Immortals, but they really won't do that much to them. And 5 Infestor, yeah, it's really, really not going to help. They'll help with the Phoenix and the uh, little ground army, but with this many Immortals, there's very little he can do. And we do see a Warp Prism, so he's going to be able to warp units right in on top of this army, which is really good for reinforcements. And also, he doesn't have to worry about a probe getting up there, positioning a pylon. He can just immediately go right into battle and begin warping in, as well as an Observer to help pick off uh, Creep Tumors. We do see 14 Roaches underway, so he is anticipating an attack, and he does now finally see there is units moving out across the map because of this... Uh, uh, creep and the Zerglings are going to try, I guess, and do a backstab, but already a huge warp in that almost outnumber, almost numbers as many as these Zerglings, already picking off quite a few. He can't afford to use, lose any units at this point. I don't think he even has, yeah, he doesn't even have enough, it looks like, to hold off this base. Even he thinks he doesn't have enough, doesn't have enough as he transfers all the drones, already losing another queen most likely. And too, I think a little bit too little too late, we are getting these spine crawlers. It would be nice to see them a little bit earlier already, a couple of them falling before they're even finished. Really good shield micro is forcing over half of the Zerg army not to be firing at the Protoss army while well, the whole Protoss army is firing. This mortal up to four kills. This m ah. This immortal up to 2 kills, this immortal up to 2 kills, this one up to 6 kills now. Yeah, these immortals are just running rampant over this Zerg Roach heavy army. And still, trying to morph in another 20 Zerglings is going to be too too late in the game now. As he's already crushed most of the Zerg army and already so many of the spine crawlers have dropped. Though we'll have to see what the Zerglings can do. Though with this many stalkers as well and more reinforcements being warped in right in here, right behind the Protoss line. And now the Warp Prism moving up to Warp Units right in on top of the Protoss line. There's literally nothing the Zerg can do, even bringing in drones to try and bolster his forces. Yep, now e even just adding to it, more Zealots being warped in right behind the Zerg line, so there's a surround for the Protoss. It's, there's nothing that the Zerg can do at this point. Even the Phoenix getting in on this and killing Overlords. There's just, there's just he's plummeted, he's got resources in the bank but nothing left. There's a good game from Vortex. And he does immediately leave, as well does Daisy. Really good first game for, I think, for the channel. I hope to have some more up soon for you. 
So thank you very much for joining me at Canadian Video Gaming. I'm Polite Canadian. I wish you a pleasant day.